Um, I'll only be addressing the incident that occurred between the Richmond County Sheriff Office personnel and not the shooting incident itself as it is still an active investigation. On Friday, February the 7th, deputies responded to the Circle K gas station on the 2800 block of Peach Orchard Road in reference to a shooting victim. Deputy Brandon Keithley and his trainee were first to arrive on scene and located the victim in the front seat passenger side of a vehicle. Deputies removed the victim from the vehicle in an attempt to administer first aid. While Deputy Keithley and others were tending to the victim, Deputy Nicholas Nunez approached the victim and attempted to take over the situation. Deputy Keithley advised Deputy Nunez to step back as they were assessing the victim's injuries. Deputy Nunez then pushed Deputy Keithley away from the victim. Deputy Keithley then struck Deputy Nunez once in the head with the tip of his Stinger flashlight. Another deputy arrived on the scene and removed Deputy Nunez from the area while other deputies continued to administer aid to the victim. At no time was care interrupted as the incident occurred prior to the start of the CPR. Both deputies acted inappropriately and Deputy Keithley escalated the physical situation with the introduction of the blunt object. Deputy Keithley was sent home after the incident and was advised to report to administrative duties on Saturday and Sunday to complete his weekend shift. Deputy Nunez was treated for his injury and was sent home. Per our protocol, an internal investigation was conducted and upon its completion, the information was forwarded to me and my senior staff. It was noted that there were multiple laps in judgment that night and the behavior of the two experienced deputies was embarrassing and highly inappropriate. Based on the facts of the incident and the volatility of the moment and the express intention of all parties to render aid as quickly as possible, this incident has been handled at the internal level of the Sheriff's Office and disciplinary actions have been administered, administered according to our policy. I realize that this course of action would not be well received by some individuals many of whom do not reside in Richmond County. However, this decision was made in the best interest of the Richmond County Sheriff's Office and the 200,000 plus citizens that it serves. Many decisions that I make as an agency head may not be understood by the individuals who have never worn a badge or have never had to make split second life or death situations, decisions. I rely on the council of my senior administrators, as well as my 28 years as a peace officer in this community to make decisions that are fair and just to our citizens, but also the men and women who put their lives on the line every day for the people who support them and also for the people who don't. Lastly, I would like to say that some of the details of the incident have been intentionally exaggerated for the purpose of sensationalism. I want to truly thank the members of our professional media outlets for allowing us to conduct a thorough investigation into the incident so that we can bring you accurate information. The desire to be first in reporting without sound facts led to multiple corrections to the story and caused this misguided divide among our citizens. For some, this was the desired effect. But we at the Richmond County Sheriff's Office will continue to practice, continue our practice of bringing you the most accurate information in the most timely manner possible. I will take any questions that you have. What disciplinary actions have been taken? Um, usually we don't get into those because they're a matter of public record. Uh, Deputy Keasley um, has been suspended for a period of 30 days also with counseling, and Devin Nunez has received a written reprimand 
Where is that? Um, we know that Keith Lee hit him in the head with the back of a flashlight, but could you go over again what Nunes did that you said was inappropriate? Yeah, at the time, uh, Deputy Keith Lee and his um, partner were initiating first aid and assessing. Uh, Deputy Nunes then came in and tried to take over uh, the rendering of aid. Now, I know both had the desire to try to aid the victim, but our protocol is once aid is being administered, then that person um, proceeds to it unless he asks for assistance. What, what message do you hope this sends to the general public, the, your decision sends to the general public and to your agency? As Repeat the first part of that again. What, what message do you hope this message sends to your to general public and to, the, to your agency about the decision you made? Well, I hope it shows that we are going to be transparent, that we're going to hold our deputies uh, accountable. Like I said, this was embarrassing, not just to the deputies, but to the agency. Um, and uh, like I said, it was highly inappropriate. Uh, and we hope that um, the citizens uh, will regain the trust of, of our law enforcement officers to the fact that they will make these split second decisions and not act in the heat of the moment. Also, we hope that our deputies um, understand um, that um, this is a calling that's bigger than them. And sometimes they have to put their personal um, emotions aside, which is a very hard thing to do at times. Um, for the betterment of this agency and the citizens they're trying to serve. Will what? Deputy Nunes be pressing charges? Um, I'm not aware. Uh, like I said, again, this is, um, we handled this as an internal investigation because of the fact that both individuals were on duty at the time, working for the sheriff's office, and per our policy, like I said, we handled this as an internal investigation. Can you clarify the in the heat of the moment that you're saying? What prompted Deputy Nunes to try to take over this life-saving uh, aid? That I can't say. Um, all I can say is that the fact that here's the victim suffering from a gunshot wound, uh, multiple deputies on the scene, they're trying to assess, um, and then the desire to run the aid as quickly as possible, um, uh, maybe prompting the decision to act quicker than he thought um, aid was being rendered. Do you plan to release the body cam video of any officers who were wearing body cam and or surveillance video from the gas station? Um, that won't be released at this time because that is still part of the ongoing uh, uh, criminal investigation. Oh, so the, for, uh, with the shooting? Correct. Is, is it common for, you mentioned that trainee was there, is it common for trainees to go out on the field like that and, and go to scenes like that? Or was this just a... a That's their job. The, that's their job. They go out wherever the call is, is being administered. Was the uh, trainee administering the aid or was Deputy Keithley? Um, it was three deputies initially uh, assessing, trying to assess the victim, moving clothing, trying to find the wound, trying to see the status of the victim, whether breathing, not beating, heartbeat, all of those were assessing before aid was rendered. So that process was being done at the time when uh, Deputy Nunes uh, came to the scene. So Deputy Nunez was trying to take over aid from the trainee or from Deputy Keithley? All three, it was three deputies at the time um, were trying to um, remove clothing, assess the victim's uh, injuries. Um, all of these things were happening simultaneously. Um, so it wasn't just one person uh, administering aid. There were several people working on it at the time trying to assess exactly what the extent of injury. Um, first, we knew it was suffering from a gunshot wound, but they had to locate that wound. So it was trying to locate exactly uh, where the gunshot or where the multiple gunshot was. Some are wondering why the GBI wasn't called in to handle an investigation like this because it was between two deputies. Um, exactly that, because it was uh, between two deputies who were on duty. Uh, they were on duty. Um, at times, that's an internal affairs investigation. Um, and that's what we determined. Um, if our investigation from internal affairs felt that it warranted um, further intervention, then we would have called them. But at this particular stage, uh, we don't feel that as well. You may have said this earlier, but does body camera footage indicate how long this physical alter altercation took place? Um, this was. Uh, a, a shove and a retaliatory strike. Um, what kind so. of precedent do you think Keith Lee's suspension sets for other officers? Well, um, our maximum uh, suspension days is 30 days and avoid uh, termination. So it's the maximum penalty that we have barring termination from the agency. So to let you know that we're quite serious in mean, reference to it. With so, pay? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. With pay? Nope. No, he, he's been suspended without pay for 30 days. What would you say to someone that says that if Keith Lee is put back on the force, he's going to continue escalating those situations in the future? Well, uh, again, I, I think he responded to an initial physical uh, altercation. 
Um, it was inappropriate. It was, I mean, but again, we had two experienced deputies on the scene um, trying to take charge of, a, of an incident based on the heat of the passion of the moment. Uh, it was inappropriate. Again, when we looked at the totality of all the circumstances that were involved, uh, we feel that this uh, outcome and this punishment um, is appropriate for this particular situation. So each situation that we encounter as an agency, we'll look at individually. Uh, we don't do it as one blanket set of rules um, for a situation. We do have guidelines for our protocol and for our policy and procedures, but it's our job to look at each individual situation and assess it um, based on um, real-time information. So how's Deputy Newton's doing? As far as? His, his well-being. Um, I've been told he had uh, stitches and then staples. I mean, is is he in good health? Do you know uh, how he's how he's doing? Yes, he's been down here for the last two days, so he appears to be in good health. To your knowledge, do you know if either of the officers had this, these type of issues before, either with each other or on other um, responses, on other calls, rather? Um, nothing uh, similar to this, no, not that I'm aware of. A lot of the public has been saying, you know, why <laughs> haven't we had answers earlier because this incident happened Friday night and here we are Tuesday morning. Is it because it took this long or could there have not been something said earlier, some confirmation that this altercation happened? Well, um, the investigation took as long as it took. It happened over the weekend. Um, we started an investigation. It was concluded yesterday. We called a news conference today. I think that's about the time that it's possible. I don't think um, having a news conference Saturday morning would have changed the outcome of the incident. So knowing about this incident uh, prior to today would not have changed the fact whatsoever. It didn't cause any uh, jeopardy to the public. It didn't jeopardize public safety uh, whatsoever. Um, so the need just to know the know, um, that's not our concern. I don't know. I think it's a fair question for the public to know if this deputy who was accused of hitting another deputy in the head with a flashlight, drawing blood, sending him to the hospital, might want to know if he's out on duty or not. Well, uh, again, um, it wasn't an interruption of, of public safety whatsoever. Um, the, the course of how we just um, employ manpower um, is, a, is the decision that we make um, based on the situation. So, uh, again, I think it would be unfair for anybody, you know, if you say the public, anyone in the room, if you are accused of an incident, that you take some time to make sure the incident is investigated thoroughly. I think it's unfair to immediately jump to judgment and to render a decision uh, within the 24 hour period when a lot of facts are, are in play. Any other question? You may ask that. I do an individual interview, so I want to make sure any other questions that you have, feel free to ask. How can you ensure this doesn't happen again? I don't think you can ensure anything will ever happen again, in short. Um, like I said, I think we put a, a measure in place to send the message um, in reference to um, it won't be tolerated. Uh, we accept responsibility to the fact that it's an embarrassment to our agency, which it is. Um, hopefully we learn from it and we, we move forward. Uh, now, can you assure anything like this happen again? I think that's unfair to say of any situation. Um, it just, um, if it happens, we're going to uh, respond appropriately as we feel we have. We um, immediately uh, were made aware of the situation, started an investigation. Uh, rendered that investigation um, within a timely period and brought the information forward to the public. What explanation has Deputy Nunez given for why he felt the need to try and step in like he did? I can't get into the details of the internal investigation as far as that. Like I said, based on the statements in which we we, we have, we feel that the, based on the statements of all parties involved, not just the two deputies, but all deputies on the scene, that the uh, punishment in which we uh, have administered is appropriate for this particular situation. So you mentioned it's an internal investigation, but can Deputy Nunes decide of his own to press charges? That would be a decision that he would have to make. Any other questions? When will he be back on duty? Um, he's scheduled to come back to work tomorrow. Tomorrow evening. And I also do want to uh, to clarify I know there's reports that uh, the object was struck with was a mag light, but this was a, not the traditional, what you call a mag light. It is a uh, single level uh, stinger um, flashlight. So it's not uh, what we consider a 6L mag light. Uh, 
again, inappropriate to have a truck with a large six cylinder mag light, which is a extremely small pair of light. Still, it is um, a blunt object and it should not be used um, for any kind of physical altercation. And that's why I mean, it's suspended for 30 days. So that means you had to hit him pretty hard to draw blood or get stitches or staples with a little one like that. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can uh, test it exactly how hard he hit and you're struggling with good blood. Uh, like I said, as far as the angle in which he uh, caused that type of injury, I mean, I, I didn't be able to expect to do that. So just want to clarify one more time. You said that the Deputy Keithley did not have a history of violent outbursts or other disciplinary actions on his record? No, the question that you asked was any that was asked was there any uh, altercation of similar nature between those who deputies and the answer was no. As far as disciplinary action, um, Deputy Keesley has uh, one prior disciplinary action for unsatisfactory performance and Deputy Nunes has one uh, also reference to um, a traffic stop. But nothing for Keith Lee and violent outbursts or anger management or anything like that? No, the district is not that I'm Yes. Just so we're clear, you're saying that Deputy Nunez at his own individual will can press charges, but the Richmond County Sheriff Office will continue to go through this as an internal affair investigation with the disciplinary charges that were mentioned. That is, that is correct. Um, I, I can't say as to um, what Deputy Nunez's options are um, as an um, individual citizen. He has the same options as any individual citizen if they want to seek a different recourse. Um, our position is that this involves two on-duty deputies within the Richmond County Sheriff's Office, which we consider this to be an internal incident we're handling from that particular Any other questions? No. Well, again, I want to thank you all for, for coming. Uh, thank you all for um, your patience and being thorough with the investigation. Like I said, there were some reports um, that sensationalized um, um, this incident, and, uh, and I realized the public um, desire to know exactly what's going on, but I hope that they continue since the eight years that I've been chair, they understand that we are going um, to be as transparent as we possibly can and provide you with the most accurate information Again, like I said, in the most timely manner possible. This is something we've done for eight years, and it's something that uh, we plan to continue to do um, as long as I'm sure. All right. Thank you.